about so far has been about light, about the energy of light, about the wavelength and frequencies of light, and then how this um, light gets absorbed or emitted by atoms, and that those absorptions and emissions of light let us know about the energy levels and the positions of electrons in atoms. This all led to something called uh, quantum mechanics. And quantum mechanics it tells us about the location of the electrons in the atom. Now, uh, perhaps you've heard of Schrodinger's cat or Schrodinger's equation. Schrodinger's equation is a uh, linear partial differential equation. And so that's a little beyond the scope of this class, uh, if not a lot beyond it, which is fine. And so uh, I just wanted to let you know uh, what this is, right? This is the form of Schrodinger's equation. And what we're going to really use is we're going to use the solutions to Schrodinger's equation. And those give four quantum numbers that define orbitals that the electrons are in. And these quantum numbers define Number one, the princi principal energy levels, or shells, the sublevels, or subshells, and orbitals. And that's technically only three of the quantum numbers. The fourth one will lead to the fact that there can be two electrons in any one orbital. But we're not going to worry too much about quantum numbers. We're going to look at their results. We'll worry a little about them. And the first one we're going to worry about is the principal quantum number, n. And that describes the principal energy level or shell that an electron occupies. And the principal energy levels are very similar to the Bohr energy levels. And they go like this. So here's our atom. The nucleus is always at the origin. And you've got a continuous growing. So this is going to be n equals 1, n equals 2 growing layers and so it looks almost exactly or exactly like three four and instead of drawing the whole circle i'll just sort of draw them over here here's five you know or uh, six and one of the things we get out of uh, quantum mechanics that we may or may not have had before is that this keeps going to seven eight all the way so according to quantum mechanics there is no limit to the number of uh, principal energy levels for electrons and this picture if it were a true picture should show um, uh, that they're not all equally spaced but we'll let that go for now so just our pictures can just show them equally spaced um, and you'll talk more in future classes really about uh, the difference in spacing as they get bigger. That's the principal energy level, and these n values are uh, given here, and we'll see the n values again. That's why we're number, and that is one of the quantum numbers. So this is your first, and I think only quantum number we'll really deal with. We'll tell you the name of the next one. It's the angular momentum quantum number. It has the lowercase letter L, which I've kind of scripted there so you can tell that it's not a one or a cursive dit. It describes the shape of the orbital in each sublevel or subshell. I will tend to use the word sublevel and principal energy level. Some people use uh, shell and subshell, so I just want to include both of them. Each value of L has a specific type of shape, as we will see, and uh, and there are letters that designate the subshells. So there are four subshells. So this is going to be A. And those are called S, P, D, and F. Uh, I said I was going to write uh, sublevels, but I just wrote subshell. So again, I, I do actually use sublevels. So there's an S sublevel a P sublevel, a D, and an F sublevel. And we're going to cover a couple of them on this page. We're going to call the S sublevel. And an S sublevel has one orbital. And it's going to be one spherical orbital.
And a picture of this, I'll draw it over here, is just going to be a sphere centered around the nucleus. Well, not too bad anyway. Let's zoom in there a little bit. And so I'll make it a sphere. I'll draw some shape to it, but we don't usually do that. Uh, but all of these are actually spherical shapes that we'll be talking about. So that is an S sublevel. And since it has one spherical orbital, it is also the S orbital. And now let's talk about the P sublevel. And the P sublevel has three dumbbell shaped orbitals. Oop, I went off page there. Has three dumbbell shaped orbitals uh, along each axis. And I will draw all of these for you as well. So it's going to go like this. So one, two, and we'll draw a third set of axes over here. Three. And let's call this the x-axis and the y-axis. And a dumbbell shaped, what I mean is two sort of circles. Um, and they should be the same size. And they do not touch the nucleus. Does not touch nucleus. Um, and since this one's along the x-axis, this is going to be called P sub x, and that's a lowercase p, and these are all, yeah, lowercase letters there, P sub x, and then if we draw on the x and y axes, the same thing, but on the y axis, oop, that does not touch the nucleus, we would call this P sub y, and then um, and again, that then those should be the same size. So these, well, we're doing our best here. Now, uh, the z-axis. Um, so I'm going to draw the z-axis coming out of the page like this and going back into the page like this. So that dashed line is behind the page. And this blue line is sort of sticking up at you like that or like that at a slight angle. And I'm going to draw the same two shapes, except that it's going to be dashed when it's behind the page, and it's going to be thicker lines when it comes out of the page. And this is how one of the ways in which we visualize three-dimensional shapes. So this one is actually coming out of the page at you. And this is P sub Z. And this is the Z axis and still the Y and the X axis. Now, okay, so there are three dumbbell shaped orbitals. So this picture here is one orbital. And that one orbital has two pieces. And you're starting to see that as you go from S to P, S has one part, it's a sphere. P has two parts and P is more complex in its shape. And we will see more of that. All right, so that's P. And oh, and one more thing to point out. So, um, and we'll mention this over and over again. So each orbital holds two electrons. So an S sublevel has one spherical orbital that holds two electrons. Uh, And there's my symbol for electrons, E superscript minus. And the P sublevel has three dumbbell shaped orbitals along each axis that hold six electrons. And please write that. So each axis that hold, so three orbitals hold six electrons. Good. Now the D and F orbitals. 
And so uh, I've t attempted to picture them here. I know they're a little hard to see, um, but first things off is that there are one, two, three, four, five d orbitals. Five d orbitals in each d sublevel. And that means that they hold up to 10 electrons. So please write that down. And you can see, whereas the S was a sphere and the P was a dumbbell shape with two parts, these typically have one, two, three, four parts, four parts, four parts, four parts, sort of going along each of the different sets of axes and one that's even between a couple axes, oh, two that are between axes. And then it's got this shape down here, which I call a donut with two other parts. And while they're not all the same, I would call them similarly complex and more complex than the P orbitals. And good. And then these came out a little better in this picture. These are the seven F orbitals. in each F sublevel. And they hold 14 electrons, so please write that down. And again, so typically, we'll go typically down here, typically they have eight pieces. And so we've gone from one to two to four to eight pieces, getting more complex in shape. And while these do not have eight pieces, they do have a couple donuts. They are what I would call similarly complex to the eight pieces here. Now, you will be asked to draw S and P orbitals. You will be asked to recognize D and F orbitals. So, uh, but you won't be able, uh, you won't be asked to draw them in this course. You will see them in future courses in chemistry and so just be aware that they're getting more and more complex as they go.